your heart be ready and would glory fill your soul if your master would come for you today is your life so full of duty that your lord is crowded out do you neglect to study and to pray would your heart be ready and would glory fill your soul if your master would come Christian greetings to our viewers at home we thank God for his messes that have gathered us here again we would all agree if it wasn't for his mercy, we could have been ensnared in one of the snares that the devils had set for us. Mm. Our feet could have been entangled. Mm. Yet in his mercy, he made sure that we are protected. Mm. Our God, the provider. We didn't get abundance. We didn't get more than what we wanted. But he made sure that there was food on our tables. We thank God for his mercies. Mm. Our lesson today is lesson five. And the title is From Pride to Humility. With me here today is Brother Mutle Karaba and Sister Lihle Lutwicha. I'm Brenda Nube, your host. Shall we bow our heads as we pray? Sister Lihle will pray for us. Okay, let's close our eyes. <clears throat> our kind and gracious Father Lord, mercy and glory to you for bringing us today at this point in time, dear Lord. We ask you to descend the Holy Spirit to be amongst us as you open your word, Lord. Father God, this is your prophecy. We may never do it on our own. We need your guidance, Lord. And Father God, please open our hearts and the viewers' hearts to hear your word and not only hear it, but try to live by it. This is our humble prayer. In the wonderful name of our Son, coming King Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. 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 Welcome once again. Lesson 5, From Pride to Humility. Our memory text comes from Daniel chapter 4, This is 3. I read in your hearing. How great are his signs, and how mighty his wonders. His kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and his dominion is from generation to generation. Amen, amen. Now, Daniel chapter 4 is a very interesting chapter. In Daniel chapter 4, whereas the whole book is written by Daniel the prophet, chapter 4 is written by King Nebuchadnezzar himself. And what's amazing is that in our memory text, Nebuchadnezzar is praising the God of heaven. He says, how great are his signs, mm. Mm. and how mighty are his wonders. His kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. Mind you, this is the king who in Daniel chapter 3 did a statue, mm. yes. trying to exalt himself against the Most High. Mm. But in chapter 4, he is saying the kingdom of the Most High is an yes. everlasting it's kingdom. kingdom. So he is acknowledged to the fact that God's kingdom is sovereign, yes. mm. that it's above the kingdoms of men. And in chapter 4, he's glorifying the God of heaven. Mm. But something must have obviously happened for Nebuchadnezzar to praise and worship the God of heaven. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, from this declaration, I think we can safely say that the king had laid aside his pride. Mm -hmm. And this is from the pride events that we have already mentioned. And from these, he was humbled and mortified yeah. by God so that he, at this point in time, he is in actual contemplation with God and he realizes his dominion over everything. Amen. Mm -hmm. um, when we speak about King Nebuchadnezzar, we speak about a man who almost mm. thought mm. he was self-sufficient. Yes. Yeah. A lot of pride. And the danger here is that um, pride is the original sin. Yes. Yes. The very sin that made Lucifer defy all the odds in heaven mm. and live with a third of the angels. Mm. Yes. Mm. Yes. Now God hates that. Truly. And, and in Ezekiel chapter 28 verse 17, mm. he says um, through Ezekiel, Thine heart was lifted up mm. because of thy beauty. Oh, thou hast corrupted their wisdom by reason of thy brightness. I will cast thee to the ground. Yes. I will lay thee before kings mm. that they may behold thee. Mm. So this is important for us to understand that whatever that we think we are and whatever that we have achieved, it has nothing to do with us. Absolutely. It has everything to do with grace from God mm -hmm. and therefore we we all got the allegiance mm -hmm. and we have to give him praise and worship because it is due to him mm -hmm. now just to bring it to us i think this is something that we also suffer from after praying to god asking for his mercies he actually grants us what we want mm -hmm. and after he has given us mm -hmm. we actually have the nerve to boast about things that we may never do because honestly there is nothing that we can ever do that will make us um have the right 
to his mercies, but he still gives them to us. Mm -hmm. And um, I like a verse from um, James chapter 4, verse 6, which I read. It says, But he giveth more grace, wherefore he saith, God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. Meaning, if you are humble, God gives you more than you have. But mm. the minute you are pride, you, 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 you have pride. You don't realize his need. You don't realize his need for you. So mm. you put everything upon yourself and it's actually God all the time. Right. Mm. That really says to us that pride is deceptive. Yeah, of course. Because while God gives you his gifts, mm. you hold on to the gifts and you say it's you. Mm. So the gifts themselves have the power to mm. deceive mm. us. And mm. we should be careful. Not to put the gifts above the one who gave who us gives. the gifts. Yes. That's dangerous. Mm -hmm. Very dangerous. I think one of the reasons why God hates pride, it's because um, it makes repentance almost mm. impossible. Mm. Because yeah. you feel you don't own anybody, any explanation mm. you are. Yeah. You, as if you have uh, uh -huh. made yourself. Mm. <laughs> yeah, you arrived from somewhere on your own. And <laughs> I think what happens to Nebuchadnezzar here should be a lesson to all of us. Yes. Amen where the ways of pride lead us. Mm. Yeah. Pride comes yeah. before destruction, yeah. before a fall. So we don't want the same judgment to mm -hmm. fall on us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now there's a very um, quote that's written by the writer here that I like. Mm -hmm. The second paragraph, it says, Pride leads to Lucifer's fall. Mm. So he now instills pride in men, thus mm. leading them against God and so. So now um, I took this and linked it to the very same book of James, chapter four, verse seven, it says, submit yourself therefore to God, mm. resist the evil and he will flee from you. Mm. So this simply says that we shouldn't bring everything as a, to us as if everything is about us when it's actually about God. Mm. And from that, God will protect us and even Satan won't have anything against us. Mm. The verse states it's very clear, it says, and he will flee from you. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yes. Um, Amen. When we speak pride achievement, we speak Nebuchadnezzar, oh. a, a king who says, mm -hmm. "Is not this Babylon the great? Mm. He has made Babylon mm. uh, from his own hands." Mm -hmm. uh, Nebuchadnezzar says these words mm. um, just after he had had. A second dream. Yes. Nebuchadnezzar yes. has the first dream yes. of the statue. Yes. Daniel comes and interprets the dream. And then now Nebuchadnezzar gets a second dream. Mm. Mm. When he gets a second dream, he then summons his wise men, the magicians, to come and interpret the dream. Mm. They are not able to do so yeah. until Daniel is brought to the court of the king and he is able to interpret the dream. Lesson for us today. Uh, heavenly messages are mm. divinely interpreted. Mm. We mm. can't hear the wisdom of God and mm. want the interpretation from elsewhere. Mm. Mm. So when we hear the word of God, the interpretation as well should be from God so that we understand the messages very clearly. Amen. 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 And you know, what's interesting about this dream is that he sees a tree. Mm. And this is a very big and high tree full of fruit. Yes. And Yuck. all the creatures of the earth are nourished by the tree. Yes. And in, in the ancient time, trees were a symbol of kings and kingdoms. Yeah. Yes. But particularly, they had a bad connotation to them. Mm -hmm. And what's interesting is that while in this tree, a command is given and the tree is cut off. Mm. Yes. And yeah. the stump is clipped. Yes, it's left and, there and, with and the And Nebuchadnezzar wants to understand what this dream means. Uh, you know, yes. and I'm looking at Nebuchadnezzar now and I'm thinking, but he had a dream from God in yeah. chapter 2. Mm -hmm. And I love what you said, that he calls his intelligence again. And they fail again with their gods. Mm -hmm. yes. But it only takes the one who knows the God of heaven, the one who has the spirit of God Amen. said by Nebuchadnezzar himself, to come and bring the interpretation of the dream and what it means. Now if you look at verses like Ezekiel chapter 17, verse 31, Hosea 14, and Zechariah chapter 11, verse 1 and 2, mm -hmm. that's where we get to see that trees are a representation of kings. Yeah. That great and majestic tree is a symbol of Nebuchadnezzar, who was the power of the Neo-Babylonian Empire at that time. Mm. I, I think the, this very same chapter shows us more of God's dominion. Yes, because it sort of goes back to that verse that is um, in 
the second book of Daniel, yes. chapter 2, verse 21, where it says, And he changeth the times and the seasons. Yes, he removeth kings and setteth up kings. Hmm. He giveth wisdom unto the wise and knowledge to them that know understanding. Amen. So this shows that no matter what or who you are, where you come from, what you have, or how you obtained it, it still comes from God. Hmm. And it is in his power to remove you hmm. or place you, yes. either to give you more power or to actually bring you down. So, so when we look at this tree, which is a symbol of Nebuchadnezzar and his mm. majesty and his high intelligence, mm. yes. him being the mitochondria and the powerhouse of, of the kingdom of Babylon. Mm. And we see heaven commanding the tree to be chopped down. Mm. That's the dominion of God Amen. versus the dominion mm. of man. Yes. Yes. And the dominion of man is chopped. Mm. Mm. And that's where we see the power of God of right God, there. Indeed. Okay, furthermore, let's look at this. Um, uh, God says the, the tree was mm. a shade mm. ah. to the animals, Angus. to the birds. Hey. And, and they also ate of the fruit. Oh. It is big, it is mighty, it has grown even up to heaven. Truly. Mm. Then that should tell us it has nothing to do with Nebuchadnezzar mm. or his ability or his intelligence. Yeah. It is but grace. Yes. Oh. He is chosen mm. as a vessel. Thank you, ma he has been made a vessel of honor. Mm. He has been allowed to rise even unto heaven. Yeah. Yeah. And then when he forgets who has risen mm. him mm. and mm. put him on the table, mm. then mm. God says, Cut it off. Yes. Mm. He has power. And, and let's look at the mercy of God. It is beyond comprehension. Mm. Like mm. Garabo mm. did say. He says, leave the stump mm. and oh. the roots. Cut oh. off Amen. the tree, leave Amen. the stump and the roots. That says, God is saying, there's still room for improvement. Amen. Yeah. I want this man to come back. Mm -hmm. yes. Which is what God does with our everyday lives. Mm. Absolutely. He does rebuke us. But he makes sure he leaves the door of mercy open. Amen. So that should we repent of our sins, mm -hmm. yes, we have yet another chance. Amen. 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 Not only does the prophet give Nebuchadnezzar the interpretation of the dream, mm -hmm. but there is a warning in the dream. Amen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the prophet gives Nebuchadnezzar uh, the warning in the interpretation, which then becomes an escape route yes. for yeah. Nebuchadnezzar, mm -hmm. should he choose to listen. Yes, Amen. yes. I think we should read the verse. That's in Daniel chapter 4, verse 27. Okay. Yes. It says, Wherefore, O king, let my counsel be acceptable unto thee, yes. and break off thy sins by righteousness, and thine iniquities by showing mercy to the poor, if, mm. it, will, if it may be a lengthening of thy tranquility. Mm. Mm. Now, I remember when we started with this lesson, mm -hmm. and we were learning about the different types of prophecy. Yes. in the Bible. Yes. And I remember us uh, recalling that the book of Daniel and Revelation falls under what we call apocalyptic prophecy. Yes. Yes. And in apocalyptic prophecy, there is no condition. It's God giving you the outline of history. But when we look into Daniel chapter 4, we see the conditional aspect. Now. Yeah. God is saying, here is the dream, yes. and your kingdom will be chopped off. Yes. But you, I am giving you time to cleanse yourself of your sins, uh -huh. mm. provided you heed mm. the mm. counsels of God. Mm. But the question is, will Nebuchadnezzar heed? Mm. If you take the advice, you get to what? To redeem yourself from uh -huh. the judgments uh -huh. of God. Uh -huh. But if you continue, if mm. you continue, the judgments of God will fall upon Nebuchadnezzar, his kingdom will be cut. Mm. But there'll still be room for mercy when we look at the storm. Uh -huh. But what I love is that Nebuchadnezzar, at this point of the verse, he had power to avert the judgments of God yes. by heeding what God was saying. And God says, cleanse yourself of your sins. Mm. Perform righteousness towards mm -hmm. the poor. Mm -hmm. mm. Now, while we're, at start, uh, uh, what, while we're still at that, um, I think somebody might be asking, what kind of a God gives you something and then takes it away? Mm. I need us to understand that oh, when God okay. did what he did to Nebuchadnezzar, yes, it was not for his own destruction, yeah. mm. but it was for his own good. Yeah. Because uh, I'm, I'm, I'm looking back at what happened to, to Lucifer. Um. When Lucifer um, decided, when his pride decided to overtake mm. what he was given, the Lord doesn't immediately say, okay, since you've done this, I'm just going to kill you and we just get over and done with mm. it. In, in, yes. in, the, um, in the book written by one of the prolific um, writers, um, The Great Controversy, mm -hmm. it says, um, the angels begged him to come back to the oh. Lord because mm. the Lord is so merciful and forgiving. He gives him a lot of time to come back because that is mm. the God we worship. He yeah. is forgiving and his mercies enjoy it forever. Mm. And now, um, since we had the warning by the prophet, um, I'm reminded of this question. It says, besides the warning about what will happen 
what does Daniel tell the king to do and why? Yeah. As Rupert has mentioned, but he mm -hmm. talks about having to give to other people. Yes. So that brings me to Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 and 9, where it says, By grace are you saved through faith, and not that, not of yourselves. Mm -hmm. It is the gift of God. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained, that we should walk in them. This simply means by giving back, we are praising God for what he does for us. Yeah. Okay, and let's notice here, the prophet touches a particular aspect oh. in the judgment, yeah. the oppression of the poor. Yes. Oh. Nebuchadnezzar has a huge empire mm. oh. that he has, he has achieved through enslaving Oh. the poor yeah. and the benefits go to Nebuchadnezzar and his entourage. Mm -hmm. yeah. This reminds us again the character of God. Mm -hmm. God fights for the voiceless. Yes, God fights for those that are oppressed. He fights for those that are widows mm -hmm. and orphans. Yeah. Yeah. And God charges us yeah. that if we oppress anyone on our line of duty Yo. for any reason or the other, okay. the very same judgments that befell yeah. Nebuchadnezzar yeah. shall yeah. befall us yeah. one way or the yeah. other. Mm. So that says that says God cares about the people He has placed under our leadership. Yeah. Yes, we oppress them, we oppress Absolutely. God Himself. Yes, Absolutely. and we must be careful because He can take that mercy away. Mm. Mm. And we should be asking ourselves each and every day, what have I done today yes. to give Amen. relief oh. to and somebody so. else's oh, life? Lord. Oh, if Lord. you woke up. You finished the day. You did not give anybody mm. relief. Mm. Then mm. there was no reason mm. why mm. God should have given you that day. Yeah. Yeah. We find the poor amongst us. God says, I shall leave the poor to dwell mm. amongst mm. you mm. until I return. Yes. The poor are amongst us. Lord. We see them every day. We pray for them. I and we don't give them anything. Mm. After we have prayed for them, we, we pray. weren't eating mm. our houses and we throw away the leftovers. Uh. Mm -hmm. We buy ourselves a lot of clothes. Some of them stay in the oh, closets. Amen. They are never used. And we watch them every day. Mm. Mm. And we don't give them any relief. Mm -hmm. Then yeah. we should realize that yeah. we are not any different yeah. from Nebuchadnezzar. Um, um, one of my writers says, he who gives to God, he who gives to the poor lends to God. Mm. What a statement. Amen. Wow. Mm -hmm. um, our shovel is not as big as God's mm. shovel. Mm. Wow. Your one could be a triple. Yeah. So God looks at people who have open hands mm. where mm. he can put his riches and they distribute. Mm -hmm. Let us allow God to use us as vessels yes. wow. to distribute his mercy. Mm -hmm. wow. Now, now, now the prophet says to, wow. to King Nebuchadnezzar, yes, your life, your kingdom is in your hands. Mm. Hey. Basically what we are being told today. Our life is in our hands. We decide the destiny. Yes. God says, if you do this, I will avert the judgment. Yeah. If you don't know, you have pronounced the judgment on yourself. Mm. Mm -hmm. So Nebuchadnezzar here pronounces the judgment on, on himself. himself. Yeah. Indeed. He's given a leeway, mm. an escape mm. route. Mm. He chooses not to follow. Not to, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. And he has to realize that the most mm. high rules. He is in charge of all the, the kingdoms. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Wow. Wow. Despite of Nebuchadnezzar mm. being told mm. of all these warnings, he does not listen. Mm. He does not give heed right. to the word of God yeah. until God says, yeah. cut it off. Yeah. He's removed from the palace. Mm. Hey. It's taken to the bush. Hey. <laughs> Today we have a diagnosis of hey. what uh, Nebuchadnezzar suffered. <laughs> Apparently because knowledge grows yeah. and people um, learn every day, yeah. they even have have diagnosed the disease that mm. Nebuchadnezzar <laughs> had. <laughs> um, it's called clinical lycanthropy. Or zoanthropy. Yes. <laughs> or, or species dysphoria. Mm. Oh. And what, what <laughs> amazes me is that the reason why this is diagnosed, it could mean there are people who suffer from it. Till today. Then it will make us wonder. What is it that they have done? Yeah. Oh, that, uh, which oh, route do they take mm -hmm. that have made them go straight into the judgment of Nebuchadnezzar and suffer from the yeah. very same disease? Mm -hmm. yeah. And you know, what's, what's, what's so painful about this, this part is that if Nebuchadnezzar, 12 months before, listened to what the prophet Daniel said, you would have never suffered from the species diaspora. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. You would have never, never suffered from that. Yes. But because of his seized to listen to the God of heaven. And you know, 
God had given him so many opportunities mm. before mm. the time. Mm. Of course. He did. He did. I of mean, course. from the time of, of, of where Daniel gave him the interpretation of his dream. Of course. In Daniel chapter 2. To the three Hebrew boys, when Nebuchadnezzar himself called them forth from the, from the fire, because he saw the one who looked like the son of God in the fire. Mm. Of course. God had been trying to reach out to Nebuchadnezzar. Mm. But this was the last method that mm. God had to use. And this is saying to you and me today, even our viewers at home, that God will appeal yeah. and appeal and appeal to you until comes a time where he has no opportunity, no, no, no choice, yeah. mm -hmm. but Not to sure. release yes. his judgments. Mm -hmm. Yes. Just to release, to, 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 to put, you know, to hiding a little yeah, bit yeah, so yeah, you can yeah. understand. Because some of us, while we still have possessions and while we are still reveling in the blessings Absolutely. of God, we cannot hear the voice Absolutely. of the Spirit that is busy talking mm -hmm. to us, mm -hmm. that is pleading with us. And sometimes God has to remove the food from our mouth. Mm -hmm. Remove your sanity. Mm -hmm. Diaspora. Mm -hmm. So you can understand yeah, the yeah, voice yeah. of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And you know, and mm -hmm. it doesn't have to go that far. Yeah. It doesn't. Sometimes yeah. we end up in, 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 in bloody situations in our lives mm. because we never listened to the voice of God. When he called us to repentance with little things. Mm -hmm. And we can still avert those crises. Mm. We can listen to the voice of the prophet of God. Mm. We can cleanse ourselves of our sins and take the righteousness of Amen. God. Have mercy on the poor. Mm -hmm. Mm. That's a thought that I pondered upon. And I ask myself, was this the only way, God? Because come on, you're the almighty God. You could have done something to prevent all of this. Yeah. You could have done something to make it a less than what it actually was. But I came to, re to the realization that when we are still in the comfort of our homes, mm. when we have everything right around us, yeah. we'll never see our need for God. We'll never see that we, we need to lean on him to have everything success. So mm. it, it simply means that through trials and tribulations, yes. it's the only time that we can say that we need God. Mm. We need Him to give us everything that we need. Amen. Mm. And not that He's a tyrant. Mm. Not that no, absolutely tyrant. not. Absolutely not at all. But because it's because of the hardness of our own hearts. Yeah. Mm. 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 Sometimes we don't understand when the blessings surround us. Hence, mm. our, our consciences are quickened mm. when the blessings are taken away. Yeah. Then yeah. we realize we are only creatures. What That's has right. been bestowed to us is through grace. Yeah. Mm. Then mm. we are able to give and God we need praises. we depend on God with those blessings yeah. that he has given to mm -hmm. us. Yes. Uh, to realize them. that the word of the prophet was true, yes, I want us to go back a little bit and look at some situations where God sends a prophet, like in the situation of King uh, Hezekiah. Yes, mm. Sends a prophet. He says, um, put your house in order. Yes, ma'am. Your days um, are over. Very soon you shall depart from the earth. And King Hezekiah turns his face towards the wall. Mm. He pleads. Mm. The prophet is halfway out of the courtyard of Hezekiah yeah. and God revisits him yeah. and says, go and tell Hezekiah yeah. that it has changed. The judgment has changed. Yeah. Immediately yeah. after that, he prays. He's immediately answered, mm. which means Nebuchadnezzar had the very same opportunity. Yeah. He did. And all of us mm. still mm. have mm. the very same opportunity. The door is still open for yes, us. We just need to confess our sins Amen. and change mm. some of these judgments. Maybe the greatest questions we should be asking ourselves is, Nebuchadnezzar's cup got full. Mm. How mm. far is our cup? Mm. How far is the yeah. judgment of God from us? Mm. Mm. We could be still um, in our sins, when it's almost time up, let's pray that we hear the word of God. We get out of it mm. while On we still time. have time. Mm. We lift our eyes mm. towards heaven. Mm. Yes. Amen. Amen. Now the author here says, um, in other words, the discipline applied to Nebuchadnezzar should be a lesson for all of us as yeah. well. Yes. Because we belong to the group of the living. We should pay better attention to the main lesson we are supposed to learn that the most high rules in the kingdom of man. Mm. Um, when we look at Nebuchadnezzar now lifting his eyes mm. towards mm. heaven, hey. Nebuchadnezzar mm. is allowed to stay in his um, animal state for seven years. Oh, seven times. Yeah, um, <laughs> seven in biblical terms mm. is completeness. Yes, he is allowed to stay in there for seven years, the completeness oh. of the punishment mm. and the chance that is given to listen mm. uh, to the word of God. We thank God mm. yeah. for people le like Nebuchadnezzar. Yeah. This man repents. After he has been repented, he is restored mm. uh, uh, back into his kingdom. Not only is he restored, God gives him more glory. Mm. Mm. Amen. Just for the mere fact that Nebuchadnezzar is rebuked, 
Mm. He listens. When God restores him back, he restores him, him with more glory. Yeah. But, this Brenda, I, 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 I don't know, but when I was looking at this, something came to my mind, and a serious question came. Mm -hmm. When we are in deep situations, yes. where the situations are so hard that we lose our minds, yes. Yes. seven years is no child's play. Yeah, sure. so it's, it's a seven very long time. In the bush. It's a very long with time. With the mind of an animal, oh, as a king. That's a long time. Mm. Mm. That's a long time. And here's, here's the question in my mind that I'm thinking, Nebuchadnezzar was eating grass all these seven years. Mm. Mm. After the judgment is removed, how did the repentance come to him? Do we have the capacity in our tribulations mm. to mm. turn unto God and hear the voice that is calling us to repentance? Sure. Mm. Or sometimes we just rush to say, yeah, God has abandoned mm. me. For mm. seven years I've been without a job. Mm. Forgetting that when you had a job, you were too high <laughs> to acknowledge other people. Mm. And when you finally lose the job, you, you pray to God the first year, mm. and the second year, mm. and the third year. Year six still comes. The question is, if six, five years pass, mm. and your prayer is not answered, and you haven't been delivered from what is afflicting you, will you have a room to acknowledge your sin and mm. repent? Mm. And this is what I love about the pagan king at this time. Because after the seven years, his mind comes back to him and he turns to the God of heaven. How many of us have the capacity to do that today? Oh, mm. man. After mm. being for seven years in a situation, would you still say there is a God? Would you even look into your own self for yeah. repentance? Or will you just curse God and say there's no God? Because we've been praying with the brethren. Mm. And that's yeah. the question that came to my mind. And it yeah. bothered me that really, 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 do we have the capacity to be like Nebuchadnezzar? Mm. And, and I think his story is very unique because when we speak Nebuchadnezzar, we are speaking of a world leader. Mm. This is a very powerful man. Mm. Mm. He's known all over the world. You, you would say, say he was the, his Babylon was the United States of our current. One of the seven current, of the ancient uh, world. Current world. Now yeah. Nebuchadnezzar is, is humiliated publicly. Sure. In front of all his subjects, hey. this is publicly hey. public humiliation. Mm. Everybody is able to see what their king has become, <laughs> and his subjects are mm. stunned mm. at the way he has been humbled, at the way he has been punished. His subjects are stunned, but at the same time, let's look back to what Brother Garaba stated mm. before. Mm. 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 This man is given an opportunity over and over again to mm. repent. Yeah. His first dream is interpreted. Yeah. He is told everything about his first dream. Yeah. The three hippo boys are brought to his palace. Mm -hmm. He sees their wisdom. Yeah. He sees how much they trust God. He sees how much his state grows. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because of these boys who trust in God. And their God, yes. Yes, not only that. He throws these boys into the fine, fiery oh. furnace mm -hmm. and he sees the fourth man coming to redeem them. Mm. That mm. only to Nebuchadnezzar was enough mm. to make him repent. Mm. But rebellious as human nature is, Nebuchadnezzar mm. does not until it is late mm. and he is made a showcase to all his inhabitants. Mm. But nevertheless, yeah. I think the most important thing is that after he was proud, he mm. is redeemed, he becomes humble mm. hey. and he is mm -hmm. grateful. Now, when, when Nebuchadnezzar is humbled, mm -hmm. he repents, he becomes a, a grateful, he is restored. Now, um, he is restored back to the very same subjects mm -hmm. who at one time looked at him and said, mm -hmm. we wonder what happened to him. Mm -hmm. And now they see their king coming back mm -hmm. in more glory yeah. and in more splendor, yeah. more wealth. Not only that. Yeah. Nebuchadnezzar, like Brother Karabo stated, mm. writes mm. Mm. Daniel oh. chapter 4, mm. oh. giving God glory. <laughs> he realizes just how big God is. He gives him glory. Not only that, he does something that is very unique. Mm -hmm. Kings back then didn't write to their subjects. Mm. But Nebuchadnezzar writes mm. to his subjects. Yeah. He explains his situation. Yeah. He, ex he explains what has happened to him and he sends it. Yeah. to the whole country. Now, before we go any further, I think um, a good lesson that we, we could learn from King Nebuchadnezzar is that 
finally, after the seven years, he does something wonderful. Mm -hmm. He finally shifts his focus from himself and to God, That's which it. is something that we should be doing as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If we see that things are not going well for us, in the first place, we shouldn't be doing things on our own. We need God. So what we need to do is to shift the focus from us to God, the one who, who deserves to be worshipped and praised. Yes. And then from that, from looking up to God, is then that we can have peace in our lives. And I think mm -hmm. I want to run with what you're saying, because in verse 34 of Daniel chapter 4, he says, at the end of the days, I, Nebuchadnezzar, lifted up mine eyes unto heaven, mm -hmm. and my understanding returned unto me. Mm -hmm. Listen to this. Mm -hmm. He lifts up by lifting up his eyes to heaven. His, in his situation, yes. his understanding, understanding exactly. restoration yes. comes in. Mm -hmm. So it's mm -hmm. time we need to look up to God in our situation so, yes. so that we can be restored. Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. and, and that's what I loved. Mm -hmm. Had he not looked up to heaven, would this situation have changed at never. the end of the seven no. years? Never. He would have never. And that is never. saying something to us, even the viewers at home, that in our situations, once we set our eyes away from our situation and ourselves, and we look up to mm. God, mm. God mm. has the power to restore us because we looked up to him. Yes. And that's what I love. And during the time of the seven years, his kingdom was preserved. Mm. Amen. God wanted him to look up to heaven mm. yes. and, and remove his eyes from his yes. earthly achievements, yes. which were deceiving him. Yes. And the minute he looked up, his kingdom would be restored to him. And at, at times, historians also say that when kings were weak, mm. most mm. other worlds would come in and break into the kingdom. Mm. But God preserved the kingdom. Yes. For Nebuchadnezzar. And yeah. that's where we see the beauty of the gospel. Mm. That mm. even though God's judgments come upon you, they are mingled with grace, mm. with Amen. mercy. Amen. And when they fall, God preserves some of your life. Yes. Oh. He's only yeah. waiting for that one moment when you look mm. up to heaven. And, and that's where all that belongs to you will be restored. Restoration is when we move our eyes and our attention from the things of this world, from our troubles, from yes. our problems, our unemployment, and we look up to heaven. Amen. Mm. Mm. I think going back to, the, to what you mentioned concerning the tyrant God. Mm. Now, the writer here writes um, in the last paragraph, it says, as the case of Nebuchadnezzar illustrates, God gives one chance after another in order to restore us yeah. to a right relationship yeah, yeah. with him. Yes. So that simply means that God gave chances. He gave a chance to, to Lucifer. He even gave Samson a chance. So yeah. why would he not give us a chance? Amen. Amen. Mm. Amen. Amen. Let us also um, remember that, as you were stating, that uh, when Nebuchadnezzar looked towards heaven, mm understanding was brought back to him that sanity and wisdom oh, is yeah. from God. That's why God says he makes the, the, the wisdom of the unrighteous yes. foolishness. Yes. Mm. Because yeah. wisdom is from mm. him. Mm. Yeah. And he takes that which the, leg, the earth looks down upon mm. yeah. and yeah. empowers it with wisdom. Mm. Yes. Because here we must yes. learn to understand God chooses to make, make certain individuals vessels of honor. Yeah. When we allow Amen. God to work mm. through mm. us, mm. he then makes us uh, vessels of honor. Amen. I want to go back to what Garabo uh, uh, talked about previously. Yeah. He says, um, God brings his judgment yeah. mingled with mercy. Mm. Ah. Actually, if he didn't, we would be extinct. Mm. Okay. That's, why, that's why David <laughs> says, when he knows he has sinned before God, yes. David says, oh God, don't allow me to fall by the hand of men. Yeah. But I would rather fall by the hand of God because yes. God is merciful. Yeah. yeah. In his judgment. Yeah. God is merciful. He will make sure I'm not extinct. Mm, mm, I yeah. remain. Mm. He will preserve me. Yeah. Preserve my name. Preserve my legacy. Yeah. Yeah. But if we were to be left to the devil, the devil destroys. Yeah. Yeah. When yeah. he has used you, he destroys you. Yeah. But God, because he is a faithful God, yeah. and he only wants to restore us unto himself, mm. he even goes back to look at some of the good deeds that we did. Mm. And based on that, True. Yeah. he makes True. sure he preserves our lives, Amen. Amen. even when we Amen. don't deserve it. Amen. Amen. Let us go further and, and look at um, Nebuchadnezzar's writing and look at some, some persons in the Bible before mm -hmm who saw the mercy and ran and tell everybody like the Samaritan woman. Amen, amen. The Samaritan woman meets Jesus. Yeah. And, and Jesus shows her mercy like nobody else had mm -hmm. previously. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and, and Jesus relates to her 
the mercies of heaven. Mm. She realizes I've met an extraordinary man here oh. who is giving me something that I don't have. Mm. Because mm. I have received that which I didn't have. Mm. I want everybody else to get it. Mm. Mm. She runs into the city mm. and mm. tells everybody, come yeah. and see yeah. this man mm. who has told me everything about myself. Yeah. Then I want to impose a question to us today. Mm. What do we do when we've been redeemed? Oh. Mm. I think that that sends a very direct message to us that God blesses us so that we can be a blessing to others. Mm. Yes. God doesn't bless you and then you keep the blessing to yourself. Yeah. Jesus never did that. He literally sacrificed himself for us so that you can be welcomed back to God, sinless and reborn. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Actually, when we receive mercy and we keep it, we receive salvation, we keep mm. it, we should wonder. Oh. if we have embraced it, salvation oh, in its wow. totality mm. wow. because you can't receive it wow. and be silent mm. Mm. a certain mm. writer gives a writer gives an illustration mm. he says if you take a fish you put it on the table mm -hmm. and you, you you find the best motivational speakers from all over the world and you say swim fish swim <laughs> you have the ability you can do this the fish won't swim mm. Mm. But immediately when you put the fish in the water, you don't need a motivational speaker. Amen. Mm. It swims. Amen. You will have to, you will struggle to yeah. catch it. Mm. Yeah. What we should be asking ourselves today is that do we have the love of Christ in us? Mm. Oh. Have we embraced salvation in its mm. totality? Amen. Because if we do that, mm. we won't need a motivational speaker to say, go and tell others about mm. the love. We'll be like Nebuchadnezzar. Yes. We will write yes. and yes. tell the whole kingdom. So if we are quiet, we should go back to God. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Re ask, uh, ask, uh, repent, ask for forgiveness mm. yes. and restoration yes. and ask for the power mm. and we move because what Nebuchadnezzar does here refers to the end time. Hey. When the end time comes and the, the Holy Spirit has been poured out, people won't be silent. Yeah. They will go out yeah. and tell the good news to everybody. Amen. Wow. And wow. and end time is not wow. somewhere far mm. off. Mm. We are in the end time. Mm. So when we see other people mm. run and news. say the good news Beautiful to the world mm. like Nebuchadnezzar did, wow. and we are not doing mm. it, mm. we should start wondering mm. if we have received the letter rain. Mm. Yeah. Because now the letter rain comes differently. It doesn't come to groups. It yeah. comes to individuals. Individually. Now we should pray and say, God, Amen. let me receive it so that I can be like, like Nebuchadnezzar. Ride, run, Amen. and Amen. go and tell everybody mm -hmm. about a Jesus who saves. Amen. Amen. I think from the story of Nebuchadnezzar, yeah. we can clearly see the importance of going through tribulations in life. Yes. Because Nebuchadnezzar learned a lot from it. That's the true. writer here says, in addition, by writing a letter recounting ex his experience and mm. humbly confessing God's sovereignty, the king is acting as a missionary. Yeah. He can no longer keep to himself what he has experienced and learned from the true God. What we have seen here then in the king's prayer and praise reveals the reality of his experience. Mm. So that means that we go through things so that we can be able to tell other people. And by telling other people we are comforting them there's nothing mm. more comforting than going to a person telling them something bad that happened to you and that per person gives you their experience as well it's from that that you learn that actually i'm not the only person going through things they are going through things too mm. so mm. this is something that nebuchadnezzar um, learned yeah. not only did he move away from his great set but also he, he he was totally humbled because now he's able to share his experience with everyone not only his family but everyone by writing this letter because Today, even we are reading of this very same letter. Amen. Mm. Amen. Mm. Amen. Yes. Amen. Not only that, um, a, a Nebuchadnezzar, powerful as he is, finally acknowledges mm. that he is a nothing. Mm. Amen. He can't Amen. boast Amen. anymore. Amen. He is a nothing. Mm. It looks like we have a problem with kings. Yeah. At a certain time, they think they have it all. I'm also reminded of Solomon. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Oh. The wisest king who ever lived. He lives his life the way he wants to live it. He attains wealth, one of the richest men ever yeah, in the yeah. history of the earth. Yeah. Yes. But towards the end of his day, oh, Solomon yeah. repeats the very same words that Nebuchadnezzar is saying. All is vanity. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Vanity of vanities. After his testing, Worship oh. God and give him glory. Yeah. Yeah. When he had tasted it all, Solomon says it's vanity. Yeah. Mm. Nebuchadnezzar has it yeah. all. Yeah. He, he acknowledges that he is a nothing. Yeah. 
And mm. then Apostle Paul says, Apostle Paul says, yes, these things are written to us mm. Mm. so that we might not yeah. fall in the same trip. Mm. 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 How mm. I mm. wish mm. we could mm. learn. Mm. We don't have much. We are not look like Solomon and Nebuchadnezzar. We don't have much. Mm. Mm. Yet our spirits are so haughty. Yeah. Mm. We are so proud. Mm. We want to fall in the very mm. same trip mm. where these kings fell. Mm. How I wish we could learn when we still have time That's and true. realize that all is vanity. Amen. True. We should true. praise God and give him glory when the door is still open. Mm. The author says, finally he came to recognize that God resists the proud mm. and gives grace to the humble. His life was a portrayal of the application that Peter made of the following principle. Therefore humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God mm. that he may exalt you in due time. That's First Peter chapter 5, verse 6. Amen. The ones very proud monarchy. Mm. Not only proud, but blasphemous. Mm. There are times when Nebuchadnezzar blasphemed against mm. God. That mm. very monarchy comes back mm. as a child of God. Mm. Mm. Repented, forgiven, humbled, glorified mm. in the presence of God. Amen. That's Nebuchadnezzar. Can we then, see him in heaven? <laughs> <laughs> of course. That's Nebuchadnezzar. Mm. Those are some of the stories yeah. that we'll be talking about. Yeah. Yes. We should learn to understand that as subjects of God, only happiness, true happiness, yeah. is found in obedience and realizing that God is God Almighty. Mm. After all, can anything be greater than sitting at the feet of Jesus? Mm. Mm. Nothing. Sitting at the feet of Jesus, we also get the glory thereof. Yeah. Mm. And, and, peace. and learning to walk in his precepts becomes a lot easier. Mm. Mm. True greatness consists of true goodness. Yeah. That's what the writer says here today. Mm. Mm. When we have done everything that we have been charged to do, let us remember that if you have not given to anyone, if you have not shown mercy to anyone, you have not shown yeah. the character of Christ. Mm. Amen. 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 The, pe the people that are around you have not seen the character of Christ. Mm. Yeah. So God charges us mm. as Christians. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Go and help your brother. Yeah. Go and give relief to your brother Amen. one way or the other so that we can run away from the judgments mm. Mm. that the kings like Nebuchadnezzar and some after him have received and some before him mm. because of failure of understanding this simple rule mm. that showing mercy to somebody else mm. is a character of mm. Christ. Amen. Amen. Something Amen. that I personally learned from the story of, of Nebuchadnezzar is that now as we call ourselves Christians, people are supposed to live like Christ. Yeah. It is not our place. We're never given the authority to judge other people. So we can't go out there and think people who are not yet in God's house and uh, we, uh, we uh, don't deserve his mercy or will never be brought to him. Because who would have thought King Nebuchadnezzar would one day become what he became, a great worshiper of God. Mm. Mm. That's something that I learned. Mm. Let us therefore remember that kingdoms rise and kingdoms fall mm. because God deems fit. Mm. Oh. We rise in our lives oh, and yes, we fall yes, as God deems fit. Amen. And let us also remember that, that the time that we are living in mm. is stipulated. It is but for a period. Mm. Soon it will come to an end. Mm. And then a greater kingdom, that which is not detected by the hand of men, Amen. is coming. Mm. And that's the kingdom that we all want. God. That's the kingdom that we all look forward to. The kind of kingdom that will be ruled by a king of kings mm. and, and a lord, lord of lords. lords. And lord of lords. Oh. Yes, the kingdom that has a lot of justice. Mm. Amen. A kingdom that has a lot of mercy. A kingdom that we want everybody to be converted to. Mm. A kingdom that will last forever. Yes. Without Turn end. Up. Yes. Amen. I want to say to our viewers today at home, we have heard the word of God. Mm. Mm. We have seen his mercy. It is evident in his word. We are therefore challenged today. Mm. What is it that you have done that shall give relief to somebody else? Mm. Who knows? Maybe things are going so wrong because you have neglected this one duty that will make you have the character of Christ. Mm. When you have the character of Christ in you, then that which you have lost shall be restored back to you mm. as we await 
the second coming of Christ. Amen. May the good Lord richly bless you, keep you, protect you, cover you with his, with his wings mm -hmm. till we meet again and we discuss these matters of God. Our lesson for next week will be lesson six from arrogance to destruction. Let's gather again and hear the word of the Lord. Shall we bow our heads in prayer and Brother Karab will pray for us. We love you more, Lord, after having went through this week's lesson. We see that truly you are a God of love, even in your judgments, which are mingled with mercy and grace, we are saved. We want to be the citizens, Lord, of your coming kingdom. Nebuchadnezzar, in his time with his own mouth and lips, he did pronounce that your kingdom he extols and it's an everlasting kingdom. Hmm. That there is no king that is above the king of heaven. As we await your kingdom, help us to examine our hearts and have mercy on the poor. Help us in our daily walk, O oh Jesus. Help us to be sensitive to the voice of the Holy Spirit in our lives. In the name of the Father and the Son, we pray, thanking you for the grace and the gospel that we have studied about this week in the book of Daniel. Amen. Amen. Is your life so full of duty that your Lord is crowded out? Do you neglect to study and to pray? Would your heart be ready and would glory fill your soul if your master would come for you today?